Hello everyone, it's Lori from Cut and Paste Craft Studio. I am here with you today to do our alpaca canvas painting. And this will be published on YouTube, so if you're just seeing it now, we'll have it up on YouTube um, later tonight. And it'll be ready for those of you who've signed up for the class. You can start painting along with us then. Uh, this is the uh, alpaca to begin with. This is how I painted it. As we go along, I'll give you tips on how you can adapt it to make it more like you'd like it to be. Uh, but we're going to start, as we always do, uh, with our three brushes. We've got a nice wide brush here that's got a flat edge that's great for making straight lines. We've got a smaller one. You'll switch to these when you're doing smaller detail area. Um, anytime I'm using the large brush and you feel the need to switch to a smaller one, you do that. And then last, uh, but very importantly, our pointed brush. We'll be using this um, for doing a lot of detail work. Now, if, you, if this is the first time you've done this class and your brushes are new, fluff them up. They'll have a stiffness to them. Um, also, if you've used yours before and you let them dry, sometimes they feel a little stiff after drying, so soften them up. Um, you will want to have um, paper towels and water and uh, so you can wash and dry your brushes. And so in uh, just a second, we'll get started. All right, the first color, you will notice that you have little pots of paint and that they are all labeled with numbers. And I will tell you those numbers as we go along so that you can keep up with us. Um, the first number we're going to start with is uh, called uh, number one, and that is called Sweet Pea. I'll show it to you here. It's this uh, green color. You've got two greens. One is number one, one is labeled number 11, and you want the one labeled one. It's a darker green. The one labeled 11 is much, much lighter. <clears throat> and the green is what we're going to use um, to give the grass. I feel like we're getting a dark shadow here. Um, we're going to be painting the grass with that. Maybe if I back him up a little bit, you can see it um, better. But dip your paint in your brush. Uh, try not to go more than a third of your brush. You just don't need that much paint. Um, and then you're just going to start painting the grass along here. Um, don't paint over his feet or legs. Just long, smooth strokes. You don't want big clumps of paint. You also don't want um, uh, to, to bump into these lines, so go nice and slowly. Now see how I'm coming up to my lines? See if you can see really closely up. Get up to my lines, um, and then I'm stopping, and we will use our smaller brush to get into those smaller spaces. Now, I've done this design a couple of ways, and um, I felt like um, the, sometimes uh, it's a little too much green here, maybe a little too much grass. So if you want to stop your grass, um, say like here, before you get to the mountains, you could. And then when we use uh, the natural tan grout color, you can move into that one too. All right. I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to take my uh, green color all the way up to this line, which is where the mountains start. But again, if you want to blend in some brown there, kind of, you know, to show uh, uh, the distance and, and uh, the grass not going all the way up to that mountain, you can do that too. Here, I'm going to show you. This was another version I did where I softened the colors and you can see I took the brown and kind of blended it down into the green. So if you want to do that, you're welcome to. If you're going to do that, just stop your green at a certain point. Now, I always tell people um, when it gets uncomfortable to paint, can you see how hard it is for me to paint like that? Turn your canvas. It's really important that you turn it around so you can get to it more easily. Yeah, you're painting up and upside down, but you're still, we're kind of painting by lines right now. So um, you don't need to be able to see everything right side up. 
Again, I'm going to take it somewhat up to the edge, but not right to the very edge. Now, I've been painting a lot of these canvases lately, and so maybe I'm going a little too fast. If I go too fast for you, and you're watching this on YouTube, you hit the pause button. All right, you give it a stop, um, you catch up, you can back up and see something I did if you want. And that way you're not um, racing to keep up with me. Now, I like these flat edge brushes because look, you can take them straight up to that straight line like this, pull away, and that gives you a nice smooth line there. Now this is grass. Grass is not perfectly smooth, so having some brush strokes is not a bad thing. Uh, this is the point where I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. And that means my bigger brush goes into the water. Uh, we don't want that paint drying up in uh, the water bowl. And uh, make sure you turn the handles of your brush that's in your water bowl away from your elbow or you'll be knocking it over like I do all the time. I'm going to adjust my chair here so I'm not bumping the camera over and over again. And this is where I'm going to take that smaller brush. Again, I'm using that flat edge right up to the edge and pulling away. I don't fill my brush up with a ton of paint. I don't want big clumps. Just get in here. Now I'm finding that even this brush feels a little too big for me in some of the areas. Now I can do it right up here against his legs because that's kind of a nice smooth line. Um, but I feel like up here under the tail, I need to go to my pointy brush. Now, again, with these pointy brushes, very, very important that you only put a small amount of paint on the tip. And that gives you the best amount of control. And you can get use the tip of it to get right up into that point. And then again, kind of go along and use it to draw this line along his little fluffy legs. All right, and then you can kind of go back and smooth that out. You know, I can see right here, I can see a lot of brush strokes, so I'm just going to kind of come back and smooth that out. Now, to get in between his legs, I need to turn my canvas. You do it too. It's also important to brace your wrist. If you're trying to paint and your hand's up in the air, you have to use your whole arm to paint with. You don't want to use your whole arm. You just want to use your fingers. So brace your hand. It's okay if this is still a little bit damp. Um, you'll get paint on your arm. That's what we do. We get paint on us. If you have a blow dryer and you can get your uh, parent to go grab your blow dryer for you, um, then you can just keep it right by here. And every time you get done with an area that you want to dry up so you don't get paint on your hand, uh, just blow dry it. Uh, we use those in the shop all the time. All right, I'm going to switch over to this side because that's what I can reach easily. Um, I will go back and do that other side once I'm ready to turn the canvas. My general rule of thumb is if it's awkward, it's time to turn your canvas. If you're feeling uncomfortable with the way you're having to hold your brush, turn your canvas. All right, get right down by his feet again. This is the boring part of listening to me paint. Not doing anything exciting right now, but that's okay. All right, I'm gonna turn at this point because I wanna get in by this foot up here. And I 
want to spread out my paint a little. And then I'm going to go uh, and paint the lines along here. All right, got that nice and painted. Um, if you want to take the time right now, you can um, paint the edge. You know, if you want to get some green along the edges here, if you like to keep, um, you know, if you want to hang it on the wall and you want the green to show along the edge, you can just paint along that edge. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because I think it would be really super boring for you to watch me paint the edges of the canvas. Um, brushes in the water, always when you're done with them. And uh, usually when I set up the paints with the numbers and everything, I we go in the order. Uh, so I would, you know, right now switch to paint number two, but instead I'm going to switch to paint number four. That is um, this called natural hand grout. It's the only tan color you've got. Um, and so you're going to switch to that one and use your pointy brush. Oh, you know, I should tell you, if you chose, if you decided, hey, I want to do... Um, a little more brown up here at the top. I'll show you how you can do that. You could blend in just a little bit of this. You know, um, when I was looking at the at the pictures of of um, where these alpacas live, uh, they live in Peru, and um, the, all the pictures I saw so it had mountains in the background, and then you could see maybe a lake or um, some um, areas where the grass wasn't growing as much. And you could just blend a little of that down there um, like that if you just wanted to give a look of that um, earth in the background um, up right close to where the mountains were. And again, just paint right over that green and then without reloading your brush, just, you know, keeping it light. We're sort of running out of paint here and that makes it lighter and lighter. You can just blend it down into that. Um, and the, but that's just your choice. If you want to keep all the just green grass, you're welcome to do that too. Um, but we wanted to give a little texture to our green grass. So we're going to use our little pointy brush again. And um, we're going to use um, uh, just a, a bit on the tip. And then I just did some little, you know, swirly little texture to where the, the grass was. Because, you know, grass isn't perfect. And particularly where Mr. Alpaca has been... Um, stomping around in it. I'm sure there are bits of dirt and mud. And so I just wanted to give it a little a little texture, um, little hills and something like that. I know some of these look a little too much like earthworms. Um, that's okay. We can sort of spread them out a little bit. There. Um, there we go for the background of the grass. Um, the next thing we're going to do is move on to color two. That is your super bright blue. And you've got a super bright blue and a super bright white. And um, we're going to use those two. We're going to start at the top with the blue. And then we're going to start blending it with the white um, as we move down. Because we want to have the, the brightest blue sky at the very, very top. And then it's going to get lighter and lighter as it comes down. So we'll start that with our biggest brush. Great big brush, and that's where you can, you know, you can get a fair amount of paint on the brush at this point. You don't have to keep it super, super light. And just start working it across. Sometimes you just got to go the opposite direction, perpendicular, um, to get that all the way up to the top. And it is difficult to blend when you're getting down into, you're running into the alpaca's head and things like that. It will be a little harder to blend, um, but that's okay. We'll work our way through it. I'm going to take the darker blue kind of up to the top of that mountain. Woo, I just went over the mountain. That's okay. My mountain doesn't have to have a perfect shape. Um, and right across here. Now you may want to switch to your smaller brush to get in that little spot. I'm cheating and 
trying to do it without getting in there. All right, now that we've got that blue going, I'm going to take my medium sized brush and I saved a spot on my palette. You can use um, if you've got just a little piece of plastic or if you've got the lid off one of the cups of paint from a previous class or even the lids of the little container you're using right now. Um, take a scoop of blue like that into your palette and then I'm going to wash off my brush so I don't make a mess and then I'm going to use just a little scoop of white and then I'm going to mix it all together. All right. Now, uh, we're going to do this several times, so it's going to get lighter and lighter each time. We'll add more and more white paint. And um, you can either continue using this blue brush to blend, or you can switch back over to your bigger brush. I think I'm going to switch to my bigger brush. And just take these colors and just go right over where we were painting and just kind of bring it down. We'll bring it down by this mountain there and we'll bring it down in between now don't worry about getting too close up to the detail bit first um, just fill in some of it and then wipe your brush off now you've got kind of a dry brush and you can start just blending this together see how I'm kind of getting up into that blue and so it's not a sharp line in between there we go. I'm feeling like that's a little bit better. Now I'm going to switch to my little brush. Go into that color of blue that we just blended. And I'm going to have to turn this guy so that I can get into those spots. I'm going to go into that lighter blue and start pulling in our detail bed. Right up to my mountain there. But I'm only going to go down as far as I've taken this other color, taken the color. So I'm not going to do my outline, my details down here. I'm going to keep them up here. And we'll do this kind of quickly um, because we want to keep this paint nice and wet so that we can keep blending it together. If you need to switch to your tiny brush now, you go ahead and do that. And blend along his ear there. I'm going to switch a little bit to my tiny brush and I'll switch here to my different uh, angle. And by taking this one, one layer color down to the base here, that means we won't have to blend in a lighter color in between the mountain and the and the alpaca later. Ah, okay. So how far did we come down? I'm going to have to switch around because I kind of want to make sure I came across with the same color all the way across there. All right. So I came this far. Let's go a little bit further down over here. All right, turning back up so we can see and um, look around a little bit. I can tell I've gotten a little fluffy up there with the darker, with the lighter color. So I'm going to go back over with a little bit of my darker color. And I do see some spots I ought to fix up later, but I'm not going to waste a lot of time on that right now because I don't want to bore you all while I fix my issues. So if you see anything that you want to fix, um, you know, if you, if you find a little spot here or there, you can always go back and do that later. I did the lighter color there. That's not what was supposed to be there. There we go. Um, this is, this is your sky. You make your sky look the way you want your sky to look. So now I've gotten, um, I've used this, this mixed color that we had. This time I'm going to scoop just a little bit of the blue 
and rinse my brush off because I am trying to keep this white fairly clean, at least part of it clean for later. So this time I'm going to mix a lot more white in than I did uh, before because I want a lighter blue. Um, and then, uh, again, we don't have a lot over here. So just right along there, I've got too much paint on my brush. We'll take some of that off. And kind of mix that up into the color you had before. And if you want, if you're planning to do your sides, you know, pause me and go ahead and do a little bit on your sides there. Oops, I got a little right there. Well, that's okay. We'll cover him up later. Now, I'm going to flip him over. And so I can reach that side because I've got a lot more space I've got to do with this lighter blue. Um, you can see how much lighter it is while it's right next to that. Again, I'm going to brace my wrist as I get up here to the detail work because I don't want to, I don't want to be hanging my arm up in the air trying to do detail work. All right. And so while we've got this nice and light, I'm going to, again, wipe my brush off and then blend it up into the darker blue. And then I think I like that. Maybe I'll touch a little in there just to cover it up. All right, and then I'm going to do one more bit. I think my sky needs to lighten up just a touch more. It'll only be on this side because this side goes down lower. So I'm going to take a little bit of the white and just make my blue even lighter. And everyone's going to have different shades of blue here. The picture I saw of where the alpacas were in Peru, the sky was so bright blue. It was way out in the mountains. Alpacas apparently like to live up in the mountains. That's why they have that fuzzy furry coat. All right. Again, always dry that brush off before you go to blend so you aren't putting way too much paint on. All right. And then I'm going to go back and try to make my line a little sharper here along this mountain. All right, we have grass, we have sky. It is time to put in a mountain. All right, for the mountains, um, I think probably start with your nice medium brush. And we're moving on to a color called night sky. Um, it looks very gray in my palette but it's actually a bluish gray. And you can see I managed to drop a little green paint in mine. That's okay, you just, I swooped it up at the end of my paintbrush. So we're going to be painting these mountains here. This is the mountain we're here, we just paint over those lines. Uh, the paint will cover it up, but when it's time to paint the little accent lines to show where the tops of the mountains are, I'll show you my sample again so you can see where the mountains go. So start with your um, night sky that's paint number three on your in your little pots and we'll start spreading it out this canvas was very challenging in terms of getting all those colors we had to use two sets of those little pots uh, to get you guys enough of of the colors um, because we just we want to add um, some detail work to the blanket that goes on here all right. Now, um, whenever you are ready, start rotating your canvas so that you can get in there and paint the details. Um, mountains have a lot of texture to them. So in, we'll be adding some texture, some highlights, and we're going all the way down to the blanket on the back of the alpaca. Yes, there is a little uh, line above that and that line's going to disappear um, but I will show you where to put the accent lines on that in a little bit. All right I got most of the back end of that.
again, you all hit pause whenever you need to. Slow me down. And if any of you all have any ideas about things you'd like to paint um, in the future, I do have two more designs that are coming up. They are even a little more complicated than this. Um, we'll get those posted as soon as I can get the canvases in. I'm going to turn here. Um, one of them is uh, the front end of a bicycle that is has a basket just filled with flowers. And that one was a little challenging because I had to learn how to paint those flowers. But it turns out Painting those flowers is not difficult at all. So I'm kind of excited about that one. And then the next design that we're going to be doing um, is a troll. I know trolls are really popular right now, and I've started him, um, but I haven't finished him. I've got the most of his body, but I'm feeling like there's something missing, so I'm going to have to add something else to our little... Uh, gnome scene to make him just right and those will be on a bigger canvas those are a 12 by 16 canvas that's why we've got to wait on those until we can get them in um, but we will again have those up on YouTube um, I am looking for a web camera and a microphone so we can make all of this much easier for you all All right, smooth all that out. And then I'm going to go ahead and get these two little mountains down here while I'm at this angle. But then I need to remember to go back because I have not finished the detail work along the edge of um, our fuzzy alpaca there. I'm excited by the number of you who have joined us for these. We, <laughs> we have spent the last couple of weeks doing nothing but tracing canvases, I swear. Now, the bottom of your mountain doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because, you know, mountains aren't. I am switching over now to my tiny brush with just a tiny bit of paint and I want to smooth out that edge of his furry coat. And then I'm going to turn him around. And this is where you may want to stop and blow dry your mountain because I'm, if to brace my wrist, I would have to stick it into that wet mountain. So I'm sort of leaning down further. All right, that is our mountain. And um, at this point, like I said, I think it's probably a good idea to do a little drying of your mountain. Um, I won't make you listen to my blow dryer, so I'm just going to continue. But you probably want to get him kind of dry uh, before you move on to the next step. And that next step is done with our tiny brush again. And we're going back to color number four, which is that natural tan grout. Um, but this time, when we add paint to our brush, let me show you like this. Dip it in, but just kind of wipe it off on the edge. You don't want to have too much of that paint on there. And then you're going to begin sort of outlining your mountain. And you just want a light amount. If you have too much, wipe it off on your paper towel. And see, this little peak here is part of a mountain. So I'm going to go up to about here and then come down to a point around here on his back. And that's one of my mountains. Remember that line that we had that kind of went up over his back like that? That was a mountain too. He doesn't have to be perfect. He can extend this line on down there. I need a little more paint, but again, wipe it off on the edge so you're not getting too much. 
and then continue your line up around the ridge and down there. And then you'll see over here, wipe off your paint, come up on this mountain. Outline him. And then this is the edge of that mountain coming up like that. Can you see my lines there? I'll show you these maybe a little closer. But really, uh, your mountain can have its lines go anywhere you want it to. If you like it looking the way mine did, then you can follow along the lines I went. Now, if you feel like yours are a little too sharp, like right here, uh, wipe off your brush so your brush is dry and go back over your wet paint and kind of brush him down a little bit. This one looks a little thick here, so I'm just going to make it look, soften that up. Maybe soften that right there. Just sort of blending that color in. There we go. Now, also in Peru, where I saw these mountains, there was snow on the top of the mountains. So I'm going to add a little snow to the top of mine. Um, your uh, color number 12 is white in your palette. Um, you just use that to mix with your blue but you're also going to use it um, on your brush. Just get a small amount, tap most of it off. Just, you know, uh, wipe it on your paper towel a little bit. You just want a light amount. Can you see how there's not much paint on mine? And then you're going to start up at the top of this mountain and brush down. See how I just have a small amount there? And I'm just going to follow the contours of this you can flip your brush over, see if there's some paint left over there. Um, wipe it off again and just keep pulling down from the top because it's not heavy snow. I mean, come on, the grass is green, so it must be spring or summer. So we don't have a ton of snow, um, but I want a good amount. You know, I want to feel like that's a very, very, very tall mountain. So he has lots of snow on him. You can kind of outline that, you know, going over that sort of brownish line. So it's looking whiter and whiter there. You could, you could use the tip of your brush with just a little paint on it, um, you know, to give some streaks, like the, the crevasses maybe. Um, but then just keep building, building up your snow until you get the sort of look that you like in your snowy mountain. And he could have just a little touch on the top of him. But I think these mountains are lower elevation, so they don't have snow on them. Um, so there you've got your mountains going on. I'm thinking he needs a little more. Whoop, now I got a little too much there. That's okay because that's the very top where the snow would be heaviest, wouldn't it? There we go. There is my snowy mountain. Now you're ready for um, what it is that you actually signed up for this class for, and that is to paint an alpaca. So uh, you have three colors um, that we're using for his body. Um, those are, um, in, in our bottles, they're called shrimp and melon and peach, but they're labeled five, six, and seven for you. And, um, if these colors are too dark for you, if this, um, alpaca is too bright for you, water them down, put a little water, put a little, uh, not water, but put a little, um, of the white paint into these colors and it'll soften them up and um, you can customize it any way you want to do. I'm going to start with my um, medium brush. And I'm going to start with uh, color number 
five, which is that brightest of the Melanie Peachy colors. And I'm going to fill in um, the parts that are his, this color. And that's going to start with his head. And again, if you need to switch to um, your smaller brush for any of this, you just do this. This color just covers beautifully. I really like this one. Don't paint his ears. We're going to do those in another color, unless you want to. Um, I'm going to switch now to my smaller brush. Dry him off. And I'm going to rotate him because that's what I need to do to get into these spots. So use that tip. Oh, my brush was a little wet there. I'm going to dry him off a little bit more. You can kind of tell if the, if the paint looks watery, it means you did not dry it off well enough before you put it in the paint. And we'll just keep using this color, use our smallest brush to make sort of, oh, they're kind of like C shapes, aren't they? We're just making little C's right there. Now the paint probably won't, with just one coat, completely hide those graphite lines, but that's okay. It kind of helps define this little guy anyway. All right. Now, um, with this darker color, um, we're alternating. So it's going to be dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, dark. So I'm going to just put a tab of paint. This is dark, medium, light. So this one will be dark. Medium, light. This will be dark. And then this will be medium, light. So this one, one down here will be dark. And that just helps me to remember as I go along. Smooth that out so it doesn't dry in a great big clump. And then I think we're best off if we just continue to stick with these smaller brushes. Now you'll be painting on a flat surface, so you can brace your hand a little better than I can. Um, but I don't have all the fancy equipment to put this, uh, to film it laying flat. So <laughs> we're going to use an easel so you can see what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to have to turn him in order to get uh, a good angle and feel comfortable. You all turn when you need to, too, but if you put little swashes of paint where I did, watch your wrists so you're not running into them. I always come out of these with a whole lot of paint all the way down one side. And this is, uh, I worked on our gnome design earlier, so I have all the gnome colors on me, too, now. Woo! Okay, I went a little over the edge there. Um, you all can use your Q-tips. Um, you know, get a little damp Q-tip and just swipe that up if you go over the edge. Q-tips are great for that. Um, let's see. I'm going to go down. I'm going to skip down to this leg that I counted down to um, and get him painted before because I want to switch to a bigger brush to do some of the body up above there. Use the point to get into your pointy edges and then do little swashes like that. Okay, now I'm going to turn him back up, switch to my slightly bigger brush. Um, because this is this whole body area. And don't worry about that. Um, the three little lines you saw there, you're painting right over them. That's okay. You'll still be able to see them 
and that's actually just something we're going to accent with a little bit of white later on. All right, now here's where I want to use that flat edge of my brush. Some people can just take their brush and go along like this and do a nice line. I get a little off sometimes, so I like to do the lining it up and pulling it down. But you use the technique that works for you. Just make sure you don't have too much paint right up near the edge because you don't want to leave big clumps hanging down. And then I'll go up this side. All right, and then I'm going to switch it completely upside down because I want to get this outer edge of the tail, his back end. And then we'll get along this edge too. Um, this edge is his blanket. And that's um, the nice thing about that blanket is you guys can customize it any way you want with the colors that I gave you. So I'm going to turn him this way. And this is where I need to go back to my tiny brush. Make sure he's good and dry. Dip a little in the paint. And then let's start getting things like the tip of his tail needed painting. And we are going to go back and do some little accent work with white, which I think kind of highlights things. Just gives a little, uh, I want to say dimension, a little bit of a finished look to it. All right, I'm getting to the point where I need to turn. You turn when you need to. I'm gonna have to turn again. All right. All right, so there's his, uh, the very top is in dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, dark. So we need to do that same thing with the legs over here too. Saw a couple of spots where I missed some paint. So this is dark, this is medium, light, dark. All right. And just very carefully use that tip. You'll know you've got too much paint on there when you can't control it. And then this little piece over here goes with that color as well. All right. I think I went too low on that one. I think I was supposed to do that one up there. Well, you know what? We're going to make it work. That'll... That <laughs> Sometimes I make mistakes when I'm doing this. But don't worry. We'll make it work. See, I think you can see I went dark, 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 and then I went up. It's, it's a little bit uh, different design there. So, But that's okay. Now we're going to go back um, with our next 
color. This is color number five. It's called Melon. It's the middle of the three colors in terms of how dark it is. And first off, we're going to do his ears. Now, I got a little crazy with my blue and his ear lost its point. So I'm going to go right back over that and cover up my blue. A little calmer with your paint, then you won't have to do that. So there's my two little peach uh, melon colored ears. Again, color number five. Uh, not the face. The face is our lightest color. But um, we'll do whatever. You'll know that, that you want to um, paint with melon in whatever color is right underneath your darkest color. And you know, there I went a little too deep with the shrimp color, but that's okay. I was able to cover it up with the melon. There we are. Then the next place we'll use melon is right below this line. This fluffy bit here on his chest. Again, using the tip. And this color actually does do a nice job covering up the graphite marks. That's from the tracing paper that we use to trace your design on. All right, um, now it's time to start working down to the legs. Now this design, and I should have said to begin with, um, this design was um, created by the same fellow who did our hawksbill turtle and our mom and baby sea turtle and our panda that we're doing on Thursday and our puppy, and that's Henry Dennison, um, who works for me. Um, right now he's not working in the shop because of course, you know, with this pandemic, everything's changed. Um, but he is doing some designs for me, and he did a really great job on this one. Now, but this, you can see, this is the top or a uh, higher spot on this other leg. So we're skipping over that, and we're going down to this part here. Henry has a great deal of talent for drawing and for sculpting. And that is something I, uh, I'm not particularly good at drawing. I can craft, I can create, I can copy, I can paint, but I cannot, I draw sticks, just, you know, stick figures. So I really love having Henry around um, to help me with things like that. And then the next spot we'll go is again right under this dark there. Um, and then over here, we'll paint his little skirt there. His legs remind me of, oh, the ladies, you know, back in the 1800s who wore pantaloons under their skirts and their pantaloons had lots and lots of ruffles on them like that. Now I am seeing I was supposed to do this one in the darker. So this one right here should be um, melon. So I'm just going to paint over him because I made a mistake. If I led you astray, you can paint over him too. Sorry about that. There are no Real mistakes, just creative opportunities. Look at that, all fixed up. Now what that means is I have to go back and fix where I should have done the shrimp right there. There we go. 
All right, now we are ready to move on to um, our next color, which is this lightest of the orangey peachy melony colors. That's this one right here. It's called Peach. We're going to start up here on his face. I don't know if y'all can hear it in the background, but Miss Melissa, my daughter, who some of you have met in the shop, and some of you, like Jamie and Darren and Di, who are painting with us, some of you know her well. I can hear her in the other room wrestling with the dog. There we go. All right, on to the next ruffle. Now I am seeing, ah, there was a spot I should have gotten in there with the blue sky. You may find that too, um, as you paint his little fluffy things, you may find spots where, oh, I should have painted, I'm, you know, missing a corner there. That's okay, we'll go back and fix those up when we're done. All right, and then we'll do this next little layer here. And then Let's see, does he go up? Yes, it does. It goes on up um, right along there. And then that's where the blanket cuts in on him. And then this little spot here is also in that peachy color. Now, you know, whatever little parts you want to paint, um, if you have a different order, if you have a different you see these funny little bits on the leg and go that's not supposed to be melon I think that should be peach you just go ahead and choose that this is your creation I know some of you like Isla and Beatrice in particular will share photos with me afterwards and I know they like to customize theirs so I love seeing what you guys do if you all want to either post them on Facebook Drop me an email so I can see what you did. Um, I really enjoy that. That's the hardest part about um, being running a craft shop in a pandemic is not being able to see what my customers are making. I'm so used to having you guys in the shop and being creative with us, and I miss that. So if you think about it and you get time, just share a quick photo with me. There we go, down to the peach. And, you know, his legs get a little odd down here, but that's okay. I'm going to go peach here and peach here. And then I believe this part over here is also peach. His legs are standing a little in, that's why I did that. And then, what did I do for that last color? Oh, I see. It's a little more peach right here. And I think we'll go a little further down the peach right there. There we go. Now I am, again, um, you probably are seeing this on yours too. You might see little spots. Like I'm seeing, I've, I've got a little white showing through right there. Uh, but I'm not going to stop and do all this right now. Um, because you don't need to watch me fixing my little spots. You want to move on and do the next uh, job. Now, I did um, his little feet in number three, that night sky, um, but that's up to you. If you'd rather do his feet, I mean, this is kind of a fanciful um, alpaca, so we aren't really um, doing him the exact colors um, that, that an alpaca would have, but that was the color I wanted. Um, and so again, I'm going to use my tiny brush. Um, you could use 
um, the night sky. You could use the natural tan grout if you wanted. Um, you could use um, one of the peachy colors if you wanted to. That's up to you. Use that tip to draw the edge. Now, natural tan grout is not the best at covering. You would think darker colors, colors would cover better, but they really don't. So, um, just because of the brush strokes, you all may want to go back later and put a second coat on there of his little feet. And again, you guys stop and blow dry whenever you need to. If you want to blow dry the feet and do a second coat then, you could do that. I got a little crazy with the green there, so I have to make his foot look a little more natural. All right, and then one last little foot. All right, um, now we are gonna go on and paint that blanket. If you want to stop now and uh, blow dry it before you go on, you can do that. Um, I'm gonna turn a little bit. Well, why don't I start out by showing you where I'm gonna paint mine. Um, again, you've got a selection of colors here. Um, the, let's see, um, 10, 11, 9, 10, and 11 are yellow, green, and purple. And these are really good colors for that blanket. But you can do your blanket um, in any of the colors that you like to. I'm gonna start with um, number 11, which is this pale, pale green. It's called pistachio mint. Um, and I'm gonna do the border of my blanket in that pistachio mint. And again, using that, um, you know, trick where I go right up to the edge and pull away. This brush is almost the right size to do the width there. Oh, look, it's almost exactly the right size. All right, and then I'm gonna turn him so I can get that edge a little better. Turn him again. around and basically I'm just doing the whole border now if I forgot to trace the heart here in the middle of your canvas I apologize I can't tell you how many times I almost got done tracing and went oh wait didn't do the heart yet um, and if I forgot you can just take a pencil and draw a little heart there or any other design you want all right, that's it for that pale green. Again, you can use any color you want. You could use the purple, um, the blue, anything like that. Oh, and number eight um, is uh, this Coastal Waters. It's um, the, the aqua blue, um, most popular color in the entire shop when we are open. And I'm gonna do the inside the bigger part of the blanket with that. It's very interesting while we're closed, probably because a lot of people don't know that we have them, but we're using a lot less of the metallic paint um, just because people aren't thinking to ask for it. We usually go through gold like crazy, and I haven't had as many requests for it. Sometimes I do when um, people order, say, a unicorn from us. We are getting some of those. If you all haven't looked on our website um, under kits, we have all kinds of different things. Um, 
everything from, you know, little unicorns that kids might paint or little wooden treasure boxes um, all the way up to the big door hangers that we do. Now, if you needed to use the smaller brush for that, um, definitely do that. All right, then for my border, um, and again, you can use uh, any combination. Um, we haven't used the purple or the yellow yet. I'm going to do this border part using my small brush and my small amount of paint. I'm going to go in here and paint this, um, the border between the blue and the green. Try to get your brush just over that painted line so it doesn't show. There you go. Oh, <laughs> just stuck my brush in the purple paint. That was not what I was planning to do. All right, time to turn. I am sliding right off the back of the table there. Sorry about that. And I went a little wild there. So I'm going to just, you've got Q-tips, you can just touch that up right there. And I'll go back and give that a straighter line. All right. Now I used my darkest um, of, the, of the Melanie Peachy colors, the one called Shrimp, and that's what I painted my heart. that tip to get into those points. All right. Now we are going to stop uh, using the brush <laughs> and we're gonna move on um, to using the wrong end of the brush. Um, the, wrong, the, the three brushes you have all have different sizes for the tips and they each make really good polka dots, okay? I'm gonna start with the, um, oh, let's start with the, I'm gonna start with the medium size one and you can see the dots that I'm making. I want to put like a fringe of dots around the outside here. Now you could do them on uh, the blanket or you could do them around. And for this particular one, I'm gonna um, alternate my colors so I'm going to leave a bigger space between my dots. Now I'm using my Coastal Waters here. Now when you make dots, if you load up every time, your dots will be about the same size. But if you load once and then go dot, 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 they're going to get smaller and smaller. So I want mine to be the same size. I will load each time. I'm going to do a dot here. Leave kind of a big space because I want to do a different color in the middle. Try to leave about the same amount of space. Now watch out for these dots. They take forever to dry. All right, now the second color I want to use um, for the dots in between, I'm going to switch to the yellow. Um, you use any color you want. You'll notice we haven't even touched the purple yet. So you could go um, with purple there if you wanted. And I'm dipping and dotting so that I keep my dots the same size. And I think I'll stop there. Now I'm going to switch to my smallest brush for the tip. 
um, and I'm going to do some dots on the yellow border. And I'm going to use color number 10, which is that um, lovely kind of wisteria color. I think that gave a good contrast with the yellow. And after I'll do this, I, I'll show you on the other sample, I did a slightly different arrangement of um, dots. I was trying to um, sort of replicate that look with, um, you know how there's usually a tassel -y fringe on there. Oh, I got a little too close together on that one. Now that's not a problem. You know what? It's hand painted. It's not a factory made print. So it's going to be it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be the way I like it. So that is um, how I did my dots. Um, now, let's pull up the one that I did in the slightly different colors. Can you see that I, um, I did a series of three dots and I put my Coastal Waters dots, I put them right on the border of that blanket. And then I did a line of yellow dots underneath them and then a line of the pale green underneath that. And I use the purple for my heart. So you all want to do these any way you want. Now, um, this is where <clears throat> we're going to do some, <clears throat> excuse me, some accenting work. Um, can you see I've got a lot of little uh, swipes of white. And I did most of those whites on the shrimp color, that darkest melony color. Um, and I'll show you how I did those. Again, super clean brush, and you want just a little bit of white. So we're going to start up here, and we're just going to—we've got just a tip of white. <clears throat> we don't want to add too much, and not on every little bit of his head, but you know, every so often, like this. And we're just doing a little swipe of white there. I think I did a little shoop right there. And then I'm going to go down to the, oh, and watch out because <laughs> you don't want to uh, stick your hand in your dots because they will be wet for a while. Um, if you blow dry them, it'll give them kind of a good skin. And that's um, helpful to keep you from dipping your elbow in them. And again, just doing a little dots, a little bit of swipes there. This is where um, we'll highlight the, those little lines that we painted right over. And then we'll kind of go here and we'll just add some little right up there. Do a little highlight on, on the end of his tail. And I am going to highlight the line that ran between his two legs like that. And then again, highlights on my darker pink. Follow that line up the swirls between his legs. There we go. And then some little sh 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 like right there. And what else did I highlight? Anything? I think that was it. Oh, I did a little on the tail here. There we go. Now, um, you highlight whatever you like. You add the details that you want to add. This is really um, your design. Now, the last thing we have to add um, are his little eyelashes. If you have a marker from our other canvas class, you can use that marker if you want to. Um, this one doesn't require a marker. I didn't want to make you pay for a marker just to do those little eyelashes. So do uh, make your um, brush have your tiniest point. Dip it in a teeny amount of, I'm using um, number three, night sky. And then just make a few tiny little eyelashes. See? There you go. And can you believe it? We are done. You may want to go back and patch up some little spots. You might want to add a little more paint here and there. You may want to soften things a little bit. 
Um, you may want to do more of the white highlighting than I did. You might like to outline more things. Um, you might see little spots like I'm seeing right there where I might want to touch that up a little bit with a tiny bit of that brown paint. Um, but I'm not going to have you sit here and watch me do touch-ups. I, I think you guys can do your own touch-ups. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, this is the second of the two teen, tweens, um, and adults classes. I will be adding very shortly um, both the bicycle and um, the gnome. Those are a little more complicated. Um, we will add some more um, of this sort of level. Um, but but we, we need some suggestions. What would you like to paint? Do you want to do... Um, oh, um, like a lighthouse, a beach, or something like that. Do you want to do, ooh, I saw a camper the other day that would be really cute. Would you like to do a camping scene with one of the little retro campers? Uh, we can definitely do that. Again, shoot me an email at info at cutandpastecraftstudio.com or hit us up on the Facebook page. Thanks for joining us today. See you soon.